Josh Harris has had his deal for the Commanders, $6.05 billion approved, uh, as Brian Mitchell joins us here on set. B. Mitch, have you ever been happy to spend $6.05 billion? Uh, and when I get it, I won't spend it. Just yeah. Like that. Yeah. But, you know, when you hear something goes for that much, it shows you the importance of the NFL to the uh, American society, said like that. Yeah, for uh, sure. That's a lot of damn money. <laughs> and, and, and you know what? But you got to realize the love and the passion for the NFL and for teams like the Washington Commanders, uh, it shows you a lot. Uh, and, and I think the ultimate thing is this. Dan can sit up here and be happy, but he owes a lot of money to a lot of people. Yeah, he but does. ultimately, he, he didn't make that growth. He ain't getting $6 grow. million. Dollars. The NFL built like a can't miss type of situation. But Josh rolls in, and let's hope he brings. Listen, people been saying, well, he hadn't won a championship. <laughs> Hell, we haven't had ch- the chance to be in the party to win a championship. So if he comes here and we're in the playoffs every year, isn't that better? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll take it. I can't remember who's second, but the Commanders are far and away the only team that has not won 11 games in the amount of yeah. time that it is. I think everyone else is like 10, 11 years. The Commanders, it's since 91. Last time they won uh, 11 games, you were there in yeah. uniform. Not, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, I'm wearing that, that ring very, because that of it. Ring. By the way, <laughs> very cool coincidence. The two most significant days of, I would say, Commanders slash Washington football history in the last, what? how long since you got that ring? 30, uh, 32 almost, years? Yeah, 31. 31. Uh, have both taken place in Minneapolis. You won that ring in yes. Minneapolis. And today yes. at the JW Marriott, Josh Harris and, voted in in Minneapolis. I don't know if the NFL owners were thinking about that when they did it. Mi- but ultimately, yeah. some things just happen because it's supposed to happen. Yeah. And maybe for everyone out there that believed that there was a curse on this team, the curse was reversed today. Today in Minneapolis. Yes. There you go. Um, but what I was going to say is, like, the Sixers have won 50 games four times in the last six years mm-hmm. and like you said yeah have they won a championship no but they got the reigning league mvp and they've won 50 games four times in the last six years which is what the nfl equivalent to 11 12 yeah, yeah. wouldn't it be nice to do that four times in six it years would be, and they, remember they tore it down they did they went through the process and they ended up in the playoffs every year yeah have we ever torn it down no, have you ever gone through a process? Thing, I don't even know if they, they have to tear it down. No, they no, just have you to have tear a plan. It down. You, I'm so happy to hear you say that, Craig. I've heard everybody talk about what this team was going to be, but I never hear nobody talk about what the plan is. But one thing I know from talking to my friends in Philadelphia, Josh Harris told you what the plan was, whether you liked it or not. Mm-hmm. But it was a plan, and what he's done is live up to the plan. Now, once I get you a reigning MVP, I get you a, a, a guy who scores the most in the league, I give you a coach who's supposed to be a great coach. Yeah. If they don't get over the hump, that's their fault. They ain't my damn fault. Right. So he gave you everything you needed to win a championship. If he comes here and gives us everything we need, it's all that matters. Right. It's all you can ask from ownership. Yeah, Eventually, go. players got to play, coaches got to coach, etc. Here's the so I'm not going to be able to go to the press conference tomorrow, which I'm bummed about. But uh, two o'clock press conference and a four o'clock radio show in DC traffic do not get along well. They don't. Uh, so here would be my question for Josh Harris, and I'm curious if you have an answer for this of how you would answer it mm-hmm. as a guy who's been watching the NFL evolve for however I'm not going to put a number on it uh, as many years as you played and now been doing this analyst stuff. Do you have a football philosophy? Right. If you're Josh Harris and you are looking at what he's done with the Sixers, and you know me, I'm a huge basketball nerd. Yeah. I can very easily see philosophically what they wanted to do. Shoot a lot of threes, shoot a lot of free throws. They have a very analytically driven model. If if I ask Josh Harris that tomorrow, what is your football philosophy? Do you think he has an answer? And if he comes to you and says, B. Mitch, what should it be? How would you answer that? I think he would have an answer because he's very analytically driven. And I believe that Josh Harris understands this team is at the bottom when it comes to analytics. Yes. Now, every great coach also has a field. So I'm going to use the analytics. We're going to bring as much analytics we need to help our coach out. So when he has a field, he has an educated guest right. on that field. But, like, how does that ultimately define a style of play, right? Like, how does, how does that come when you say, like, what's the plan? You can't plan to draft Caleb Williams unless you're, like, 
go ahead and truly tank. You can't train a, this, you can't right? train a draft them unless you want to suck this year. Right. But, like, yeah, every team wants to go draft the next Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Cool plan, guy. Right? But, like, how do you actually come up with a, a structure, a philosophy of what you want your team to look like so that you draft and sign free agents into that? Like, what is that structure See, my like? thing is you come with an analytically driven format to put, to construct your team. Then once you get your team, let's be real. I was drafted in the fifth round as a former quarterback. Yep. Nobody knew what the hell I was going to be. But when I got here, they said the only way you can make teams return to kicks and punts. I had lived my whole life saying, I'm never going to do that. That's the stupidest thing in the world. <laughs> and then I catch one and I return a touchdown. Now, what I had inside of me, that 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 that, 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 that competitive drive, it kicked in. Hell, I'm going to try to be the best at this thing. Right. And I would hope, I think that some people think I was one of the best. But ultimately, it's like, once you get people in, how can you get the absolute best out of them? Right. Because James Harris was not drafted. Remember that. And James Harris with the Steelers was one of the best pass rushers ever. Right. So the whole thing is not try to say draft first round or draft first. A lot of first rounders suck. Am I right? For sure. So if they suck. That means a lot of seventh rounders excel. Right. So I think, find the best yeah. out of what you get. So like I think you you touched on something that's really interesting that people don't necessarily understand in the world of analytics and football, which analytics can drive not just like a style of play, oh we're running the ball more, passing the ball more. It 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 drives and informs who you actually select and the traits and characteristics. Because I'm sure Bethard drafted you, right? No, was it, Charlie uh, Castle. Ch- Ch- Charlie, okay. So I'm certain Charlie. They almost got fired because he drafted a five, ten and a half quarterback. <laughs> and Jack Hickson said, what the hell are you doing? But he saw something in, in whether it was your speed, your size, your competitive drive, something that said, this guy can help us win. Mm-hmm. And hopefully that they can figure that out. Because the other thing is the league evolves. And this is where my hope is, Brian, is that they're on the cutting edge of where the league is going. They realize, like, because I tend to think the league is going to shift back towards running the football a little bit more because defenses are so small. I'm with you. Can you be on the cutting edge of that and understand how to do that in a smart way? Like, those are the kinds of things that I'm hoping Josh Harris hires the right people to spark the, the rebirth of this franchise. Think about this. The best 10, 15 years of this franchise was Joe Gibbs. He sure. rolled in here. Wanting to be a pass happy team, he realized after being zero and five, that's not what we're about. Yep. He made an adjustment. They went eight and three the rest of the way. They finished eight and eight that season. They won three of four Super Bowls that they attended in the last what ten years. Right. You have to realize you got to be a cutting edge guy, like you just stated. The league right now has gone so damn small. Joe Gibbs was a run first team. They had a quarterback with over 3,000 yards and three receivers with 1,000 yards apiece. But they had running backs that had 1,000 yards apiece yeah. too. They figured so out how to manipulate it. what does a defense have to figure out to try and stop that? Right. This league, see, this is what I've said. I, I was an offensive player all my life. But I always thought as a defensive-minded guy. On offense, I want to get matchup advantages for me. Okay? How about on defense? You start trying to set it up. Right now, these teams have these big offensive linemen. Defense is getting the faster people. They're beating them. What if I start getting some maybe a little smaller offensive linemen? Right. Who are as strong as they are and just as quick. And now I start running the ball down your damn throat. What For could sure. you do? Can you stop me? Right. If I decide I'm not going to throw it 30 times a game, I'm coming up the middle with your little bitty ass defensive lineman <laughs> 35 times. What's going to happen? Yeah, you're, you're going to crush them. Like, you got to set yourself up. With, like, the whole thing is having a mindset of it. Like, my problem with Scott Turner, and I love Scott. I've known Scott since he was a kid. Threw him in a, uh, a laundry hamper, threw ice on him, and taped him up. <laughs> but the ultimate thing is, Scott never went away from what he thought. And the problem with so many guys in the NFL who aren't successful, they think they know more than everybody. Right. Eric B. Enemy is from Andy Reid's school. What do you know about that? What I know about Andy Reid after three years, Andy, I, I would say, Craig, I'm going to set you up in the 
out wide all week. Next week, Craig, you out left. Third week, you're going to be out wide, out left. You're going to be moving around. I'm going to put you in a position where they're going to give guys to check you that I know can't check you. Right. Scott never adjusted. Right. Eric has been taught to adjust. So just that makes me have more hope for the offense. For sure. All right, let me ask you this on the way out. Um, I'm trying to remember who brought this up. I don't know if it was Doc who brought it up. No, I was listening to – maybe it was Kime who, who brought this up on his podcast. I don't know. I've been listening to a lot of stuff. Uh, try to give people credit. Someone smart said it, uh, but your name came up in it. I said that. Oh, it was no, you. I'm joking. It was, it was Brian talking about himself. <laughs> one of the peop- – or one of, one of the kind of red flags when Dan got here was he brought in Dion and Bruce Smith and all those guys. But it wasn't just bringing them in. It was taking a guy like you for granted. You had been here. You were a part of the fabric Doc of the Price, team. I heard Doc say it before. Uh, yeah, Doc said I think Kevin said it too. I think that's actually who it was on, on Take Command with us. And he said, you know, like, yeah, getting Dion is great, but that means you have to get rid of Brian Mitchell because Brian Mitchell is your return guy, and that ain't so great. You were the fabric. You were, you were a part of what it meant to be – a Washington football player at the time, and you were going to pass that along to the next generation in due time until your time was cut short uh, for reasons that had nothing or were, had everything to do with the fact that the person who was making those decisions didn't get the human part didn't of the game. Clue. So when you look at this team now, do you think there is enough of an identity to build on from a culture standpoint, from a fabric, like who are the guys – here, or is that going to be something that comes in with the next generation I'll of players? I'll you some quick stuff right now. Ron Rivera came in to change a uh, culture. I believe he changed the culture because they have players on this team now that very much I, players I would have loved to play with. Yeah. Jalen Allen, Terry, Terry, uh, Terry uh, McLaurin. McLaurin. Yeah. So those two guys right there, you have the fabric of what you need. Uh, they enrolled in and got rid of me because I think I cursed Vinny out the first week he was here. Because he asked me a question, he, was, he gave me a dumbass answer, and I gave him my opinion, which I always do. Yeah. But those guys right there, I remember Terry McLaurin telling Eric Bien to me, coach me hard. Yes. I need that, and my guys will accept it. What did Eric, Eric Bien to me come in here doing? Coaching hard. Yeah. And not only offensive players have discussed Eric, defensive players have said it too. That's a coach who gets the whole fabric of everything. So for me, ultimately, what I want to see is that I want Josh to come in and understand that there are guys on this team that already can take you where you want to go. Yeah, and then the you question. don't have to change everybody here. Yes, because I would say you turn on your show, my show, Grant and Danny, Doc, Kevin, the Jug, anybody you want to turn on. I promise you, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne. Terry McLaurin are always praised. Jahan Dotson, keep those type of guys around, the guys that don't mind being kicked in the ass to become better. And those guys that have less talent than them, guess what they do? They don't question. They fall in line. And the problem with Dan was he went out and got Deion Sanders and wanted to make him better than Daryl Green. Deion was great, but once he got here, he sucked. <laughs> I remember he got caught from behind running a touchdown on a punt return. <laughs> I wanted to score that touchdown. Just say. But what yeah. I'm saying is you have enough guys on this squad right now who have the mindset and the work ethic to take you where you want to go. Make sure you keep bringing those type of guys here. To hell with somebody else star from five to ten years ago. Make yours into a star. And I will say this, analytics can be a nice little safeguard against that because if you make informed decisions based off data, what you did five years ago don't matter very much to the data folks. So there you go. That's a nice little safeguard on that. Brian Mitchell, everybody, uh, he is on 10 to 2 each and every day on 106.7 The Fan. With the so big ear guy. Yeah, with uh, that Finley fella. Uh, <laughs> he'll be on tomorrow, uh, and, and we'll wrap up with the perhaps most epic real things real people have said in real microphones next here on the Team 980. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.